All right, so welcome back to the channel. In this series, we are comparing Stanley to Lee Nielsen. Now, if you know anything about those two brands, you know that they are very similar. So we're going to take a look at a few of them side by side, take a deep dive into their specs, see what was changed, and maybe discuss why. Stick with us. Welcome back. This is video number two in the series. Now, if you paid attention to video number one, you know that I'm supposed to be doing this video on the number fours. But I forgot this plane is supposed to be traded. So I needed to do this video now so I can get this one off to its new owner. Um, I'm trading this one to get, I think it's 18 number fours of all different brands that are going to be part of that battle of the fours and like a whole other video series that I'm going to be doing. So I want to get this off to its new guy. So we are going to focus to the 102s right now. Um, I collect 100s, 101s, 102s, 103s just because I like them and I think they're cool. Um, I was pretty surprised to, to figure out that these were the only Stanleys that I had. I thought I had a lot more Stanley 102s, but I have a lot more Stanley 103s. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about, yes, this is bronze. These ones are cast, okay? The other thing, if you know anything about 102s, you're going to see that they are standard angle. And then when you get to the Lee Nielsen, low angle. So we need to add another guy in here. We're going to add in the Stanley Handyman. Um, I know they're not the most popular, but it's a low angle. So Stanley got smart and realized that for a block plane or a thumb plane, you really only need low angle. I know a lot of people that still use standards. They'll go out and they'll find that the Lee Nielsen 103, but that's more of a collector's. People reach for the low angles more because they just work for the task. I mean, if you're working in really tough grain and you're using a plane like this, then okay, standard angle might come in handy. But most of the time, these are the planes that you throw in your apron and then you pull them out when you need to trim down dovetails, put a chamfer on something, ease a corner, you know, that kind of stuff. So we're going to add this guy in. The other thing, a lot of these, when I do these videos, I measure everything. So I even measured like the thumb holes to see if they, to see if they matched. Um, a lot of these specs are only like a 16th of an inch off. So this thumb hole is a 16th of an inch smaller. This width is a 16th of an inch shorter. So I don't want to go through all that because I feel like those are like insignificant when we're only talking a 16th of an inch. So I'm just going to go through the main statistics with you. Um, I'll pick one of these, get them sharpened up. I'll get these two sharpened up and then we'll put them to the test. So blade width. The blade width is an eighth of an inch difference. So for these ones... It's one and 15, sorry, one and five sixteenths. The Lee Nielsen is one and three sixteenths. So they made it a little bit smaller. The Lee Nielsen is also a quarter inch shorter compared to these ones. Now, I like that because again, this is a plane that you're going to throw in your apron. You're just going to pull it out and do some quick trimming work with it. So you don't need it to be as big as these ones are. Now, weight wise, they did make it significantly heavier. So these ones are just about 12 ounces. This one was 15.7 ounces, so it is heavier, but again, that's going to be because it's made out of bronze. It has an additional feature that we'll go over, and then the blade is thicker. So let's look at the irons. You have to turn this one a lot, and I want to explain that real quick. So because this is low angle, if they were to leave it so you only have to turn it slightly, here it is with it completely recessed, I guess. It's real low to hold in your hand. It's, it's real short. So what they did is they made this, so you turn this a lot. And then boom, that's a comfortable angle. It, it fits really good in the palm of your hand. And you can use this one-handed if you wanted to. So that's why this one takes a while to turn. So the Stanley irons, they were about 1.8 to 2 millimeters thick. Okay. Then you get the Lee Nielsen iron. And that one is 3.1 millimeters. So pretty significant difference there. Now, as I've said in all of my videos, the thicker the iron, the better. I mean, you don't want to get crazy with it, but all of these reproduction irons or the, the, the current makers, they're making their irons thicker. And that's even the case when it comes to the Jorgensen Lowe's plane. I did a review on that too. And even that plane had a thicker iron, not as thick as the Lee Nielsen, but, but definitely thicker than these old laminated steel. 
On that note, these ones are all laminated steel. The Lee Nielsen is A2. So I'm not going to do a test that's edge retention. We already know that A2 holds an edge longer than laminated steel. So I'm not getting into that. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice on all of these planes, the posts. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but I'm, I'm calling them that and I don't care. So the posts here for the Stanleys, they're about 2.6 millimeters. Then you get to the Lee Nielsen and it's 4.7 millimeters. And that is 3 sixteenths. So they definitely beef this up here, which I like. Because there's a lot of force going on right here. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these broken. So I will say that. I don't know that I've ever seen a post on one of these planes broken off. But I still like that they beefed it up just in case. you know. <laughs> so the other thing you're going to notice, it's not on any of these other planes. Lee Nielsen added the depth adjust here, which I love. If you are anything like me, I struggle setting planes with a little, little tap tap of a hammer. You know, you got to carry, carry one of these things around and, and tap, tap and tap and tap and like, uh, nope, I'm not good at that. I love being able to just take this and micro adjust it when I need it. Micro adjust it, micro adjust it back, whatever you need to do. I love that they included this here. It just makes life so much easier. The other thing that this helps with is if you need to take your iron out to sharpen it and throw it back in, the irons have this little indent right here and they sit right in this groove. So when you put the iron back, it's going back exactly where you had it. Because again, this plane, you're supposed to be able to just grab it and use it and not have to fiddle with stuff. Grab it, use it, go to town, throw it back in whenever you need to, and then keep it simple. Okay. Adding this does that. None of these other planes have that. We will use the Sweetheart because I know that's a popular brand. So there you go. None of the Stanleys have this. Lee Nielsen added it, and I think that is the best feature they could have added to this plane. Yes, they beefed it up. Yes, they made it look better, but this right here is invaluable to me. I love it. I'm not going to go on about it anymore. <laughs> all right, the other thing you're going to notice is the beds on these. So all of the Stanleys are kind of the same. When you get to these vintage ones over here, they all pretty much have the same type of bed right here. The Handyman is just these little little nibs right there if you can see those here i can use this these little nibs right here that's the only thing that the iron's resting on but then when you get to the lee nielsen look at that bed on there so they made an entire surface for this blade to contact which means it's going to be more supported less likely to flex it's going to hold through the cut i mean that it really helps when you have a bigger bed on these it's it's kind of like the bedrock versus non-bedrock planes this helps. It's proven to help. I actually did take a flashlight when I had it set up and I wanted to look down here to see, is the blade even resting on all of that? It is. So then I did the same thing with these ones and the blade is literally, whoa, literally only resting on those two points. That's it for the handyman. So I'm, I'm going to imagine there's going to be a lot of chatter with this one and it's not going to feel strong. Now with this one, it does rest on the full piece right there. But it's not as big. It's also because it's a standard angle. They couldn't put a lot unless they built this up. So that I get too. But, but this one's kind of a shame when it comes to the handyman. The other thing that's of note is the, the lateral adjustment here. So as you can see, the older vintage ones have quite a bit of play in this lateral. The handyman... Has slightly less. This lateral I'm okay with. Because if you need to adjust it slightly for whatever reason, your iron's out of square or whatever, I like this. These ones have too much play for me. I don't I don't like having all of that movement. They could have machined that better. Then you get to the Lee Nielsen. So I'd say that's about the same as a handyman, which I like. I like that you're able to adjust laterally. Um, I did a review on the Lee Nielsen number 62, the low angle jack plane, and it was an older model where it pretty much had no, you could not adjust the blade laterally, like at all. They had machined it so well, you couldn't adjust it. Well, the iron I had was out of square, so I couldn't, I couldn't adjust for that. And no matter what I did, it was still only cutting with one side. 
So I like that they're allowing play in here. I think that's necessary for the common woodworker um, just in case, you know, anything gets messed up on your iron, you need to be able to adjust that. Um, who knows, maybe you're working on a project that you need to have it slightly to one side, heavier on one side, whatever. I did forget to mention the other thing when it comes to the bedding. So the blade rests on these two contact points. It's the same with the vintage ones too. These two contact points, which I, <laughs> I never liked. I never liked that it was, you know, the, the whole iron and the cap assembly and everything is pushing down on just these two points. Not that they're going to break, but just, it's just not supported. So Lee Nielsen recognized that and boom, they machined this entire surface right here for the iron to rest on. So they have this big bed here, this right here, and then they also have these two little nibs on the sides. And... I mean, they just gave it so much support that I think you're going to see the difference in the use that they beefed it up. Going to prevent a lot of the flexing, going to make it stronger, and it's just going to feel more solid in use. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I think, let me see, maybe I'll use the England one because these are all so similar that I don't, I think the England one's, no, it's been used. Maybe I'll use the England one because the sweetheart, that's going to take a lot of work to get that iron back to, back to life. Let me check this old one too. This is the old rule and level. That one's not bad, but it's out of square. Yeah, somebody painted this one green, so I'll be working on stripping that and re-Japanning it eventually. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I have a buddy of mine that sells Japanning. All right, so yes, we will use the England one. Here's the, oh, that one has even less of a bed than the Stanley, other than the Sweetheart. Man, they really started cheaping out. Let, let's, let's look at that real quick, just because. <laughs> and keep these organized, which one's which. This is kind of a side note. So the sweetheart has more. So this one's older. This is an old rule and level. It's the that one there. And then you get into the sweetheart. Okay. So older, newer, 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 brand new. <laughs> um, this has less of a bed here than the sweetheart does. Then you get into the England, which has even less of a bed than the handyman. They fixed the angle, but even less of a bed there. So. I should probably use the sweetheart. Um, that's just going to be annoying to sharpen, but <laughs> I'll get it sharpened up because I think it's going to be the most fair example that's going to be out there if we're going to if we're going to include a standard angle here. All right, so I will get them sharpened up and I will be back to you in a few. All right, so I'm just taking a minute to tell you guys that I started something new. Um, it's called buy me a coffee. So if you're enjoying the content and you like what I do, there's a link in the description where you can buy me a coffee. I'm also offering memberships. So if you are newer to woodworking and you want somebody to bounce ideas off of, get advice, feel free to check out the memberships there. Uh, last thing is I'm being told that I need to start doing that like and subscribe thing. So like and subscribe. All right. So I got them all sharpened up and ready to go. They are all at a 25 degree angle with a micro bevel on it. I know that this one looks steeper, but that's just how they do them. I did put them to the, the angle gauge and they are all 25 degrees with a slight micro degree bevel, micro bevel on there. So there's that. Um, the other thing I did. So this one, it hurt my soul a little bit to do this because this plane was actually new in the box. Um, never used. So I went ahead and flattened the bottom, flattened the back and made it a used plane now. So that hurt me a little bit, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, I flattened the bottom of this one a little bit too. It's definitely not where it should be. I mean, you can see that back here is not even being touched up here is not even being touched, but this is the standard angle one. Um, these aren't my users at all. These go in my collection. So I wasn't getting crazy with them, but I did fix the bevel on this one. And then flatten the back on it as well. It is. I thought I saw lines, but it might look like it in the video, but it is flat back there. All right, so we will get them assembled. Whoa. 
Whoa. There we go. For this test, I have a scrap of um, maple. I'm also going to do another one that's walnut end grain. I found this little block. It's, it's pretty figured, but we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So let me get this one prepped up. If you guys haven't tried a Jorgensen yet, um, I definitely recommend them. So I have one of each, and I did a review on one of each. Now, I am not sponsored by anybody. Like, you can tell by just looking at my channel. It's way too new. I have no sponsors. But I love, I love these planes. I mean, for the price, they're just amazing. Obviously, Lee Nielsen is better. That, that's obvious. That wasn't the point of the reviews. But they're awesome budget planes. Um, I actually end up reaching for this one more than I do the Lee Nielsen. So, all right, we got this prepped up. I'm going to start with the Lee Nielsen. Let's go to the handyman. All right, if you guys can see, it gets thinner. So the bed of this is not parallel to the base of the plane. So I need to shim this side. I don't think we're going to be able to test this plane. Um, it is way out of whack. So what's happening is the iron is constantly heavy on one side. On this side, no matter what I did, no matter how far I tried to adjust it laterally, it was still heavy on this side and only cutting on this side. I couldn't even get this side to protrude at all. So that's telling me that the machining in here is not parallel to the bed of the plane. And I tried to show you guys that in the mouth here, that it's a lot thinner here than it is over here. So I tried to adjust for that. I tried to put pieces of card, uh, painter's tape, pieces of paper. Then what I was finding is, whatever it was doing, it was lifting it so much that I was able to see light under the iron. I tried to show that too, that when I would look down here, when I had it shimmed as far as much as it needed to be, I could see light under the iron. So it wasn't going to hold securely. It wasn't going to work. Um, I can test it with just the one side, but it's only going to be cutting one side. So I don't feel that that's to, I don't feel that that's fair to the Lee Nielsen that it's only going to cut to the one side. Um, let me see if I can show you guys this again. I'm guessing, because this is the first handyman I've ever tried. So I'm guessing that this is a common issue with them. I mean, you can see it right there. 
Look how thick that is compared to this side. And then every time I tried to shim it, I was able to see light under here, which is not good. You're going to get shavings and all kinds of stuff in there, and that's absolutely pointless. Um, yeah, so here it's out on this side, not on that side. So we don't get to test this one. Um, I mean, like it'll probably take shavings if I cut it on that side. Yeah, it's definitely going to take shavings on that side, but it's not going to be fair to the Lee Nielsen. Even then, it's super hefty shavings, too. So, can't test this one. If you guys have a handyman and you like it and it works, let me know. Um, this one will go back in display. I just pinched my finger in there if you guys saw that. Luckily, it didn't cut me. All right. Let's try the Sweetheart. <laughs> After all that. Lee Nielsen, Stanley. All right, so there you have it. Just to review some of the specs, uh, the Lee Nielsen is heavier. They thicken the iron. They added more support for the iron with the bedding, and they added the depth adjuster. And then, of course, they made it bronze, which we all love. So, Lee Nielsen won. Did the 102 do okay? It did. Um, it did a little bit better on the end grain than I thought it would. The biggest difference, there, there's two things with the Stanley that I want to point out. So, I felt like... I kept having to adjust the iron. I felt like the lateral would go out or the depth of the iron would back off, like it was getting backlash. And this thing is so tight, I'm worried that if I tighten it down anymore, it's going to break. Um, so I definitely don't want to do that. But that was one thing that was annoying is it just kept getting out of whack and I kept having to fiddle with it, especially when it came to the end grain. Uh, the other thing with it is 
if you've ever used a low angle next to a standard angle, they take a lot more effort to push. And if you haven't tried it yet, I recommend trying it just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, with the Stanley, even on the Maple, I felt like I had to get behind it. I felt like I had to put force behind it. But with the Lee Nielsen, I could literally stand to the side and do this because where the camera stand was, sometimes I was to the side to, to be able to do this and it worked. Now on the end grain, I did have to get behind both of them, put a little bit more effort, but I needed significantly more effort when it came to the 102. Um, I am bummed that I didn't get to try the, the Stanley Handyman. I honestly think I'm more bummed that I took it from unused to used and didn't get to use it. So, I mean, that stinks, but it is what it is. And maybe that's why a lot of people avoid Handyman. Um, if you guys have Handyman and you guys have the same issues, let us know. If you have Handyman and love them, let us know. If I ever find another 102 low angle Stanley, then I'll give it a try and I'll, I'll throw that in the description. But obviously the Lee Nielsen one. I mean, I was showing you guys the shaving of that. This is end grain, and that just blows my mind because, I mean, this is like, I don't know anybody that's grabbing a block like this and using a thumb plane to plane it, but it did a great job. And this was full length. It just kept breaking, but it's it's full width, and it's just like whisper. I mean, it's just really cool. Um, so it definitely excelled there. The other thing that was nice is it stayed pretty much where I set it. Every once in a while, I would have to, I mean, this is tightened down enough now. But being able to micro adjust it with this was was awesome. And the fact that it didn't really move too much laterally was awesome also. Little taps here and there and it was it was good to go. It's also more comfortable to hold. Um, when you're holding the Stanley, you're, you're really high up. And you kind of want it. Maybe I was bumping the iron back here. But the Lee Nielsen, it's just, it just fits well. It just fits well. The last thing I want to mention with these planes is... Do you need a 102? Not really. Um, I have a 101 and a 60 and a half, and that's why I'm trading this one, because here it is next to the 101. And then here it is next to the 60 and a half. So it's, it's like pretty much dead middle between them two. Um, if you do walk around with an apron and you want a plane that you can just throw in your pocket and take out when you need it, the 102 is a great option for that. I don't walk around with an apron. I'm normally in like sweatpants or ba basketball pants or something like that. So I don't carry a plane around. Plus I have them pretty much all accessible at my bench. If you've got a big shop and you're walking around, you wear an apron, go for it. I definitely recommend the Lee Nielsen. Um, I didn't look up the prices, but I will throw it on the screen to let you know what a Lee Nielsen is new. If you're looking for a Stanley 102, I mean, you can find these at a flea market, garage sale, whatever, for like 10 bucks. Um, eBay prices are tough because they fluctuate depending on the price. The old rule and level one's going to be a little bit more. Stanley, the sweetheart will be a little bit more. England's are cheaper. So it's kind of up to you guys what you want to do on that. Um, yeah, so Lee Nielsen took a working design, just improved it, and just made it better, which is the theme that we we're going to see throughout all of these, but I still wanted to do the head-to-head the -head comparison for them. Um, I will definitely be getting that number four video out to you guys next. It's going to take me a little bit of time because I have a lot of different Stanleys to look at. And kind of like this one, I want to look at the specs of all of them to see. It's also tough with Stanleys because they had so many different types. But I'm going to work on that and I'll get that video out to you guys next. And thank you. I hope you enjoyed.